Okay. All right. Good morning. Here we go. Let's try to check. I got my other glasses on. Good to see. All right. Good morning. This morning we're talking about rejection. What it is. <laughs> uh, and how people with sales experience process it. What is the difference? Uh, when people say I have experience in sales, uh, they that what they're talking about is they are talking about something very specific that is unique and unique enough to for a potential employer to want to hire them because of that sales experience. Because an experienced and knowledgeable potential employer knows the value of someone with sales experience that that, that experience and what they that person worked on inside themselves gives them a value that other people don't have. And that value comes from their ability to handle rejection. Okay? And the way that works out is like this, is that studies have been done on people in sales and what happens in the brain mentally when those people experience sales rejection. Okay, what that is like. And what they found is that when a person experiences sales rejection, uh, the brain processes that experience the same, with the same level of pain of a level for being stuck with a needle. So I'm taking a needle and jabbing it in them, all the way up to being shot. Okay, it is just that devastating a blow and impact sales rejection. It also registered emotionally in the brain, the same as losing a loved one, a parent, sibling, or child. Okay, that's how emotional it was some people experience. It was just that devastating. They couldn't focus anymore. They had to go home and lay down. They became physically ill, okay? Throw up, vomit, wretch. Yeah, that's what sales rejection is like. Now, for the person who got back up and went on the next appointment, repeatedly, what these studies show, what they found was that sales, reje sales rejection experience in the brain processed as nothing. There was no experience. In fact, what they did find was not only did it have absolutely no, there was no getting shot, there was no pinprick, there was absolutely nothing, no response in the brain whatever to the rejection. All right? But what happened was the person so quickly moved on that actually there was a spike up at some point after the rejection. Okay? They, they found an emotional burst, okay? Because the person has learned to process rejection. Studies have been done, and I'm sure people out there know, they've, they've heard about this, is that uh, people who have, they put, on, put glasses on them, they wore glasses that made everything look upside down. And after a period of time, eventually, the person, they stopped stumbling and bumping the stuff, and falling down and actually start seeing everything is right side up. Go figure. Because the brain eventually itself rewired those processes. Oh, okay, guess what? Everything's not really upside down. We still feel gravity. Other senses were still awake in the brain. Okay, and it experienced the bumbling and stumbling and then the brain actually took everything and flipped it and made it right side up because that's how things really are. Your brain kicks into what's real mode. Everything is not really upside down. It's still right side up. It's just that the information coming in is wrong. So let me correct it. The brain corrects it 
to see things the way they really are. It's the same with the pain of rejection. No, Billy, there are no monsters in your room. When I cut the lights off, they don't magically appear. They're really not here. Look, see, give me the flashlight. Let me show you there are no monsters. Here, you keep the flashlight, okay? And eventually the Billy, what? Doesn't need a nightlight anymore, right? The nightlight was when Billy was afraid of the dark. What happened to Billy? Over time, he learned that ain't real. There are no monsters. In fact, I'm ready to go to sleep. It, it, it just, it doesn't register. You know, he doesn't imagine that there's a superhero. He doesn't need a flashlight. He doesn't need a nightlight. He didn't need a little angel picture or something or a picture of Superman on the wall. He just go to, he's just, okay, I'm just gonna go to sleep. I'm tired for to go to sleep. That's it, it's just, okay. So nothing registers anymore. There is no more fear because now the brain knows from over and over again realizing it just ain't real. I mean, that's it, it's just, it, it's not real. That's the experience goes that you, so when someone comes into a potential employer's office, okay, what happens is that when and they say they have self-experience, that potential employer knows this person understands that rejection ain't real. It's just a person who doesn't have the ability to see the value. So you cannot transfer value to that person. Period. That's one thing I do love about sales. If someone sees the value, I can always sell you what you want. Well, I don't have any money. Okay, we're gonna work with that. This is America. Not having the money is never a reason not to buy something. <laughs> Welcome to America. Okay, goodness. So, it's about reality. What happens with rejection? When you have experience in sales with rejection. You know, because I know that A, rejection is a part of it. B, it's about transferring value. C, the person doesn't see the value. And D, I learned something. I gained something, okay? And if I did the right thing, I did plant a seed in the person, okay? Right? Seed is there. Uh, that in their brain, the brain is going, you know what, there was some value there, you know? Yeah, that was, you know, some value. But I can imagine someone trying to sell me a whole life insurance policy. Okay? And tell me I need to pay $300 a month for half as much coverage as what I'm getting for $150 a month with term life. You know, I can't see the value in that. You have a hard time. But now if that person then says, oh, well, why don't I offer you a term life insurance policy with more coverage than what you have for $140 a month? Now they got my attention. Now I gotta go, hmm. But guess what? Since I'm my own agent, am I gonna cancel my own policy that I put on myself? No. I don't cancel that policy. I might even buy his policy and just increase my insurance coverage. You can have as much life insurance as you want. So I'm not understanding that's the reality, that that's why some people who have bought their life insurance from their uncle, cousin, nephew, brother-in-law, okay, why they won't switch, they won't cancel their policy and get mine because of who sold it to them, okay? And that's a huge barrier because it's hard to, you know, for me to cancel life insurance policy I sold myself, yeah. Well, who sold you that part? I did. I bought it. Oh. I have life insurance. Oh. I'm licensed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's going to be kind of difficult. Yeah. Can I be sold? Yeah, of course I can be sold. You know. But more likely, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to try to sell that person. I'm coming in being on my team. But that's what rejection is. Rejection isn't real. Uh... It's not painful. It, it, it is a boogeyman. 
it is a reason why people don't get into sales initially because you have to get over that hurdle. I mean, when it is sales, I'm sorry you do. You have to get past that hurdle of that pain. Because I'm sorry that pain is real. It is this. It's not make believe. But eventually you learn it through repetition that it's not real. There's no reason not to enter into that risky situation. Can't, because you want people to like you. And you don't want to approach people a certain way where they go, well, you're trying to sell me something. You know. And you know, really, I got news for you. People are going to not like you. Okay. That's not going to happen. You know. And anything, what it is, you get to learn certain behavior. By fact, what I like to do is, uh, when people go into witness protection, I simply like to continue to come out and let them see that, wow, he still ain't gave up? He's still trying to reach out to me? Because I want to see how they change. Because they're going to have to do one or two things. And so, okay, Mr. Still, you know why I see you keep calling and keep trying, but I really just am not going to do anything. And that gives me an opportunity to ask a question. Oh, okay, interesting. Very right, interesting. You're just not going to do anything. Let me ask you, I got to know. I'm just curious. Okay. Because, uh, of course, you know I hear this all the time. And I always love getting different people's answers. And so, you're not going to do anything. And so, the reason why you're not going to do anything is... And sometimes you can hear it in their voice. They're a little bit like, well, I really want to. But basically, the explanation is, Mr. Stewart, I've pretty much quit at everything in my life. You know, I mean, I've never followed through on anything. There's nothing that challenged me outside my comfort zone that I ever followed through on. You know, that's the reason why I'm not in school now. I did start taking some classes. I went a semester. And I thought, you know, this really ain't for me. So I quit. I still got the student loan debt. It's messing up my credit. I thought about going back. But pretty much everything I've ever tried to do in life to better myself, I pretty much quit at. I'm a, I'm a, basically, I'm a quitter. I don't have anything Mr. Stewart, in my life where I follow through on. You know, I only halfway did everything. Even if I did try it, I went out for cheerleader. You know, didn't make it, and I decided I'd, I'd never try it again. You know, that rejection one time of not making a chili squad. I didn't have to, I even quit going to football games just because I didn't have to see anyone out there cheerleading. You know, what, you didn't try to get on a pep squad or nothing? You know, that was your response, quit? Okay. Um, and so it's an opportunity to find out from people and learn how people are. Because, see, learning that experience of dealing with people, why people make a decision not to do something that is in their best interest, you know, uh, that gives me a, when I, as a, again, as a salesperson, it gives me that sales experience that I'm talking about. That I have something of value. I'm increasing my value. I was talking with a woman, cost was a factor. And she has um, two daughters, um, and now two grandchildren and one on the one another grandchild on the way. Um, and if something were to happen to her, and I don't want to say too much more than that because then she'll know if she ever was to see this video, she know I'm talking about her. But she's a good friend. Um, but if something happened to her, I mean, her children, where they are, they're young, you know. And they would have no way to even put her on the ground. That would be just, let alone the fact that the youngest daughter is totally dependent upon her. Totally. I mean, like, that, that youngest child, if something happened to her, that youngest child is just going to be out there. It's, I mean, would have to grow up too quick. And that, and that wouldn't be good uh, for a young girl. It's, it's not good when a young girl has to grow up too quick. That, that's, nah, nah, that, that ain't, we, we're not going, 
we don't even have to go down that <laughs> that road. But if you got life insurance in an adequate amount, and that child uh, was a partial beneficiary, had her name, had a check in her name with no strings attached, with a comma in it, you know, a five-figure check with her name on it, okay, now that child can make some different decisions, okay, about how to survive. And if that child would have called me up, I could actually advise the child on how to set up a plan, okay? So that child could survive. We could set it up. You know, I, I could help her and say, we can do this. Excuse me. So that child could survive, you know, for a, a year, two, totally off of that money. I mean, I could set up where she could live off that money for two years, easily. Easily. Yeah, seriously. Now that's value. If something were to happen to you, man, and this check came to this daughter right here, okay, who hasn't turned 20 yet, okay, and has a child of her own, a six-month-old baby, and something happened to you, all right, I could help this child with the amount of money that she received from this life insurance policy that I'm offering you the opportunity to take advantage of today to be able to live off those proceeds for two years easily. I promise you, two years. She make it and we don't have to worry about something. What does that mean? The child would make it to age 21, which is what she would have to do. She's not 21, but she would need two years to make 21. Okay? And be, the, her baby would then be ready for head start, at least an early head start. Okay? I mean, you, you're getting the picture here now? You understand the value now that I can transfer to people? And once that bell goes off in a person's head, and sometimes you literally can see it, once that bell, that light goes off, okay, and they see the value, okay, she then was left with a decision. Did she have the money right there? No, when are you gonna have it? Okay, if y'all can take it out of my account on the 10th, on this day. Okay, all right, we'll do that, all right. We'll give you a call, let you know, look, okay, you ready? Okay, we'll let you know now. It's finna go through. Okay. All right. See, that's value. And you gotta be able to transfer value to people. I mean, that's real. I mean, real important. I mean, I can't, man. Wow. You know. Uh, there's different ways to sell cars. You can sell a car. You can sell a person a small car, inexpensive car. I said, look, I got this car right here that I can stand behind the quality of it. It's used car since 2017. Uh, I can sell it to you for $8,000. It's a Ford Fiesta. Yeah, 727 Ford Fiesta. $8,000. Oh, yeah. All right, but it gets 42 miles to the gallon. Okay, now. Oh, well, you, you said something now. And, then, and at, and at $8,000, I can finance you your your car don't be $150 a month, $158 a month. And that's well within your budget. Matter of fact, that's half of what you can't be willing to spend per month. <laughs> All right. Morning, bro. How you doing? That's half of what you want to spend. Uh, your credit score is here. We pulled your credit. And you keep this car two years, your credit score is going to double. You better buy your house because you bought this car. You make good timely payments, your credit's gonna go up. Of course, no one can guarantee that. Anyone tells you they can, is lying to you, grab your wallet and run. But this is the way credit works. Credit scores work. It's based upon paying money over time. That's it. You pay money over time, it affects your credit score positively. Your credit score goes up, okay? Keep paying the rest of your bills the same way, Okay, your credit score, you know, that's it's gonna be effective, positively. Okay, until you reach your goal to buy a home. See, once you transfer value 
And see, you got to understand, sales is educating when you have, when it's idea products. You got to be able to sell the idea to people and let people see stuff. Maybe a person needs, wants a certain kind of car because, why? That's the person who has the money, okay? So it's needs versus wants that's being sold to. But, again, I digress. The topic today is about rejection. A person who has learned that rejection isn't real. It's simply that a person can't see the value. That's all. Okay? All right. If you've educated them, given them the facts, and then ask the questions, because see, asking the questions afterwards, after you got the rejection, allows you to learn something about them. And lets you learn one simple thing. Can they see the value? Are they situations that they can't see the value? Maybe they just cannot. Maybe they just cannot see the value. Maybe that's where they are. Maybe you are trying to sell ice to an Eskimo. You know, someone for whom what you offer just doesn't have. See, that's where you got to get educated. And that's the part I really try to communicate. See, there's a, you, they're getting educated and you're getting educated. You're always going to get educated in a sales career. Always. You're always going to get educated. Always. It's just that simple. But that's a very, very important point about sales is rejection. And educate yourself on that. Peace.